And welcome back. So we got you back in the cab of our 2009 again. And this is an item that came up when we were adjusting uh, the emergency brakes and a few videos ago that uh, I had to hold off on looking at any further until I could get some parts in. And I've gotten those parts in, but I want to show you what we have here. Now, I've adjusted the cable, but watch this. Just with one hand... I can easily push that e-brake e pedal all the way to the to floor. And having other rams, I mean, it, it shouldn't be quite that easy uh, to do that. And typically what that means is we've got excess slack in the cable. And we don't have the, something with the cable is not quite right. Basically leading to a lot of slack. And what this pushing this pedal down is doing is having to take up the slack in the cable before it would actually engage the um, the e-brakes themselves. Now, I did look at what we've got going on up here and the cable mechanism for the pedal is, you know, pretty straightforward and it doesn't look like anything here is particularly missing like a ratcheting mechanism or anything. But if you had one of these rams before, you know that pushing on an e-brake pedal usually has a fair bit of resistance to it. And normally by the time you're about halfway down, you, you've got a pretty solid e-brake set at that point. Normally you can't push them all the way to the floor like that, let alone with just one hand. But I'm gonna release the uh, parking brake here. Now we did adjust it to where if you put this truck in neutral even as it sits and try to move it with that pedal down, it, it does provide an, a sufficient enough grab on the e-brake to t keep the vehicle from moving. But I don't like how loose that is. And after I poked around things for a little bit, I should say after we poked around things for a little bit, I'll show you what we found. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release that. And we do have it in park and we do have the wheels chalked just in case. But there are a few things, one of two of which are over here on the driver's side. And you'll have to forgive me because I've got to crawl my way underneath here. Let's see. Let's look at the display here so we can get some light on the subject. Okay, so this is the driver's side e-brake cable that you're seeing here. And notice the insulation is pulled out of the mount right here that clips into the bracket that eventually clips into the actuator for the e-brake shoes. Now what's happening with part of this is when you push down on that pedal this entire sleeve here is actually being pulled inward because it's no longer anchored to this now this cable here does have an internal metal jacket but the best way I can equate this is that if you've ever ridden a multiple speed bicycle or a bicycle that has a uh, cable brakes on it and the insulation the outer jacket of that cable becomes detached from either the cable itself or from a secure point then if you'll notice if you try to break or like shift it like if it's, if it's like a five speed or ten speed you'll notice the cable has to move first until it hits up against something solid and then the internal cable will move. Uh, the other thing is, look here, as I do this. See that gap right there? This outer metal piece here that is supposed to clip into this bracket looks to be broken free from the metal piece that has the fingers on it that actually clip in place and hold it into this bracket. So again, it's a, it's, you can see it there. It's just another point of movement. Now I can pull back on this cable and you know, that that's what actuates the e-brake, but you can see that I don't think that metal piece is supposed to be broken off from the other metal piece that secures it in the bracket. Again, it just gives it another place where that cable is moving and creating slop that shouldn't be there. Now, if you look this up online, one of the things that happened, and you can see a little bit of it here. Let me show you this. I gotta, I gotta twist the camera around, so forgive me. 
you see the slop in the cable now I did adjust this adjuster nut a little bit to take some of that slop up until we could get parts in but that cable is sagging a little bit more than it should it shouldn't have quite that much sag in it and if you looked this up online one of the things that typically happens to a lot of these 1500s is if we bring you back here to the actuators the actuators if you're in an a, uh, in a climate where you get a lot of rust a lot of times those actuators which are right here sorry if you look at the the tip of the flashlight there where that little lever that gets pulled with the parking brake these will actually seize so you'll have the parking brake set and because of corrosion it'll pull the lever partially or fully uh, for the e-brake and then when you release the pedal on the inside of the cab due to corrosion this lever won't sling back all the way with this spring assist won't sling all the way back to the release position so the e-brakes and the back wheels tend to stay partially engaged and because of that that also leads to a lot of issues where the cable will slack will slack down because you're not taking up the slack with the e-brake pedal on the inside of the cab because you released it but because the back wheels aren't pulling the cable towards the rear to release the e-brake shoes you end up with a bunch of slack here but as you can see on this truck uh, we're not having issues with the actuator sticking on the driver's side here we've got issues where the cable mounting points are actually broke in a couple of places so not only in this area back here where you saw it clips on to the uh, back of the kind of the uh, it's, it's basically e-brake cable clip or bracket that it clips into there as well as if you come over here look at that that is supposed to be the piece that locks this part of the cable into that bracket and you can see that this is also broken so what this is allowing this to do is move out of position not be held in so as you're act trying to actuate this cable either pull tension on it or release tension on it it's allowing this cable here on the other side of this bracket to move forward and back independent so it should be secured here and it's not so it kind of goes back to that theory we were talking about earlier where if you've ever ridden a bike with any kind of cable-based gear shifter or cable-based brake and that cable that you're playing with isn't secured on a secure point like it's supposed to it allows the entire cable jacket to move forward and back and it's going to create sorry i've got you going upside down uh, it's going to create some of this slack you see here because the cable's not being held in the right spot. Uh, so also on the passenger side, when the e-brake is being applied, it's not pulling the lever all the, it's not pulling the lever as far to engage the e-brake as it is here on the, uh, on the driver's side. And uh, again, we found another mount point where it, one of these points you see here kind of looks like this with the little fingers on the side of it that hold it in place. Uh, it's secured to a bracket and it looks like this piece is being pulled out of the bracket. So again, there's a secure point kind of like this on the passenger side that the passenger side bracket is kind of shifted out of. And again, I think it's what it's causing it to do is be out of position where the cable as you pull it is pulling a little bit on the jacket before it actually pulls on the actuator but again the other thing is you'll notice that these are made out of plastic on this older cable the replacement cable this is now all metal it looks like a much beefier set of uh, e-brake cables than what this set here is but either way but anyway that's my theory those are some of the things I've noticed. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I gotta spin you around here. My apologies. Uh, so what we have to do here is, what I'm gonna do here is obviously replace these cables because they've got broken secure points, at least driver and passenger on the rear. 
you know, everything going forward where you see that mount point up there next to that kind of that body mount. Uh, that one looks good all the way to the inside of the cab, all the way up to the e-brake pedal itself. I think once we get these cables situated and get the excess of this slack taken out of here, hopefully with those new cables, then we should have a much firmer e-brake cable than we do now. But what we got to do is take the slack uh, off of this adjuster so we can start to get these cables out of here and then proceed forward because again you'll see another not that this one's broken but you'll see that this one's made out of plastic and you'll see that the replacement we're going to put in here where all of these kind of catch points that you squeeze together all these fasteners are all made out of metal on the newer cables but once we get the slack out of here we can start you know pulling these apart and uh, getting this cable dropped out of here and getting the new cables prepped to be put back in now this is pretty deep and I don't have a deep well to get in there and because of the sides of this I can't even get a ratchet in there so what I had to do when I tighten this because I you can see I took a couple threads out of this what I had to do to tighten this is basically just kind of put a put something in there to jam this nut so it wouldn't spin between the nut and the side casing here this adjuster or this protective sleeve uh, and just spin it backwards from here because this will rotate and this will allow you to take this hook piece and use this as the adjustment provided you hold this nut steady so that's what we're going to do we're going to jam something in there to hold this nut to keep it from spinning and we're just going to spin this one backwards here uh, to start taking the tension off of this and drop it now uh, just need to take note here of about how far down uh, this nut is and we'll get it back into kind of a similar spot and when we put the new cables in and kind of fine-tune the adjustment from there but that being said it was a kind of a long explanation of what we're going to do uh, I'm going to get some tools and some parts and start disassembling this and of course I'll show you the part number we went with I, I went with Ray Bestos the same Element 3 series line that we used for their brakes and rotors and the e-brake pads. So, I mean, like I said, uh, I was happy with their brakes and their rotors. So I figured I'd give their e-brake, replacement e-brake cables a try. Like I said, I'll, I'll bring you back and, you know, show you all those part numbers. And of course, show you how we're going to get all this disassembled uh, and get the new cables in. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and work on this and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So I just want to show you this here. Um, this case, this piece, if you remember before, is attached to the driver's side e-brake cable. You can see the two pieces there. Rather than fidgeting with this bolt and trying to back it out, I had enough slack in the cable. I was able to pull the two cables together and get it to come out of this piece here. So as you can see, it's at least dropped this down. And now we just have to work on the next piece of this, which is I've got to look at the replacement cables that either get, has to be taken out of this clasp here or that clasp there. It's going to be one of the two points. I have to see if the replacement... Now, this is the cable that comes off the passenger side and comes around the top of the differential, comes over here and plugs into this adjustment piece that you see here uh once you get the if you can do the same thing uh, like i said that made it a lot easier uh just to kind of pull on this cable pull these two pieces together and get this cable again which is the driver's side to come out of this piece here and with that be with that piece being out you can see that we can you know got a lot more access to that bolt where we can now kind of tip it down and get a wrench on it and back that thread out to its original position it was before I, I moved it the first time because you can kind of see where the clean threads are there versus where it was sitting oh so what i need to do next like i said is go get the replacement cable again because this is the one that joins the pedal that you see on the inside here with the two cables here um Interesting thing is, like I said, this longer cable comes all the way from the passenger side, comes over here, clips into this bracket, and 
is what's joined to the pedal on the inside uh, of the cab. Uh, and the driver's side one hooks up to that piece again that you see there, comes out to your adjustment screw and is on this side of the bracket. So it's kind of an interesting, interesting setup they have here, I guess. But I gotta see if, uh, again, like I said, whether the replacement cable comes out this far or includes that second length of cable there. So I'm gonna have to go get some pieces. And like I said, I'll continue to work on this and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So I wanted to show you this, that we got our cable disconnected. And on these fittings you see here, they will slide out. You don't have to separate this out, like make it wider than the than the piece it holds into. If you look at the top of these brackets, and you'll see one on each side, is a little piece of metal, like a little retaining finger, if you want to call it that, that locks in the head of that cable and keeps it from pushing forward and coming out. So all I had to do was get a little bit of a screwdriver in here and kind of bend that tab up a little bit. And we were able to get it out of this union connector, whatever you want to call it. Because the cable that uh, comes with it, the replacement cable, only goes up to this first e extension piece. And if we pan you over this way, just to show that to you. That is the cable end that will come out of that when you bend back that top finger a little bit you think and you then slide it out of the bracket now the, again this was the passenger cable and like we discovered uh the passenger cable the replacement this piece is also plastic just like it is here but it doesn't seem like this is the piece that's prone to breaking all the time so what i'm going to do next is now that we've got the cable disconnected from the mechanism that goes up to the e-brake uh, you can see we can kind of push this out of the way here. Let me get you some light. There we go. Matter of fact, let's see if we can... There's some metal. There you go. That should hold it. So this is the one that goes to the passenger side. We've got some fasteners to undo because it's bolted in a couple locations. Uh, this is the one that goes to the driver's side, and you can see this better now, where this piece, this cable, which should be attached to the fastener on the other side, to lock it into this bracket, you can clearly see that that piece is broke. So what we can actually do is just slide this broken piece off. Uh, I may have to cut it off. Oh, well. Actually, I shouldn't have to cut it off. I should just be able to push this cable through that mounting bracket at this point. It's gonna, it's gonna make me feed this piece forward and push these fingers together to get it through this bracket. So either that or you could just take a pair of wire cutters and just finish cutting this plastic piece off. Because again, uh, no, we lost some light. Shop lights, they're a blessing and a curse. Form of the time, they don't wanna stay where you wanna put them see that there I just got to squeeze these two fingers together of what's left of this clamp to get it through here or just finish breaking the rest of that clamp off to get it out of that bracket and then we can work on taking the slack that we now have in that cable and getting it off of the hook on the driver's side actuator again now that we've got plenty of slack in this cable you can see where this piece looks to be also broken away from that piece where it's supposed to be securely mounted into that fastener. So interesting. So like I said, I'm going to finish getting this plastic piece off of here so I can get it out of this bracket. And then we should just be able to uh, kind of peel that cable forward a little bit, pull this forward, get it out of this holder, and then once we have that, then we should just be able to kind of pick up on the cable to get it to get this hook part of this cable out of this uh, out of this arm here to get this cable out. But I'm going to work on that, and then I'll I'll bring you back in a bit. Thank you much. And welcome back. 
So I just want to show you these two part numbers here. Remember, these are Ray Bestos uh, replacement uh, e-brake cables. But that's the part number for the passenger rear cable. And this is the part number for the driver's side rear cable. And we do have our cables out at this point. And the passenger one actually wasn't broken where I thought it was broken, to be honest with you. I thought it may have been there because of how loose that attachment point bracket was. But this is just one of two attachment points on the factory body that are secured by, by a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. A long one, a short one. The long one goes in a frame rail right next to the rear right shock. And I'll show you where this is at. But And the shorter one is bolts to that attachment point, which is on top of the rear differential as it comes over and around and makes its way to the driver's side here to mount up. Now, the difficult part here on this one, on the passenger one, was this is where it clips into the back of the, um, the brake assembly, uh, where it clips into that mount point uh, to hold the cable in place, right? And that's the section that clips into the lever uh, for the e-brake shoes. These, are, these have three tabs on them that have to be depressed. And you can see it here better on the newer one. See, there's one there, one there, and finally one on the other side. And I found the easiest thing to do, since I knew I was replacing the cables and didn't need to keep these, was I just took two of the three tabs, bent them completely forward, and cut them off with a pair of snips. So, and then mash what was left of any nub flat. And that way, all I had to deal with was, on the other side here, rotate the cable around, push that last remaining finger in and that allowed me to slide the cable out of the bracket now since the cable was already disconnected from the driver's side mount point um, you can pull this cable forward before you take it loose from the bracket you can pull this cable forward and just kind of pick it up and take this little kind of curved piece out of the actuator uh, for the uh, emergency brake itself which made it uh, you know easier to to kind of deal with in that aspect because uh, all then all you were doing then was worrying about you know getting these fingers either all three compressed in or separated now one of the things you can probably do if you can get it in there and i've seen people do this is if you don't have a tool to do it is put a small hose clamp around it tighten it up so it compresses the three fingers while at the same time you push this through and that should compress it enough you can get it out of the bracket in case you know you wanted to reuse this cable but again i wasn't concerned with breaking it because i knew that we had a new one so like i said this is just a mounting bracket it's loose even on the original and on the replacement um, i also don't see any binding issues with the passenger cable it moves, sorry, just trying to get the display to come back on the camera. There we go. Uh, it moves pretty easily. So I had to look into why it wasn't pulling the passenger side actuator as far out as it was the driver. But going back to the driver one to show you what we were looking at earlier. This is the piece that clips on to the rear uh, brake assembly. And you can see where it snapped clean from the end where it attaches to the cable. So this whole assembly was just moving in and out. And you can tell that by it was starting to bend the locking fingers backwards. So this is the piece that went onto the, the brake assembly. So that would have been looking something like this. Something like that. And this is the other piece which clips into that other bracket we were looking at. You notice that this one's kind of made of plastic, unfortunately, and you can see that's exactly where it broke. So it broke, in, broke, it broke in both mounting places on the driver's side where the cable has to clip to a bracket, and the bracket's meant to hold the cable in place so that way the inner cable moves and not the outer jacket. Uh, so that one definitely needed to be replaced. And on the replacement, unfortunately, I thought it was metal. It is metal in one aspect it's metal where it clips into the back where it goes into the uh, lever or where it gets held in a place where the cable goes in a lever to actuate the brakes but that was just like the factory one but unfortunately it looks like the other side of this i was mistaken i thought that may have been made out of metal but it's not 
it's it's still plastic so you know yet to be seen if these will last any longer than the the factory one did especially with these being broken now uh, i'm not saying it's a design issue um because you can also see it was starting to pull apart because again it was pulling on that cable externally before internally and it was just starting to pull all of this you can even see the metal jacket underneath was starting to pull apart because you can see that spiral in there just kind of starting to separate um again it could have been that somebody was off-roading this and just snagged this cable on something and snapped that mount and that mount or it could have just been aged because to be fair it is a 2009 and these look like the you know original factory e-brake cables but i don't know anyway that's enough rambling uh, what we're going to do now is just kind of snake our way underneath here and uh, start to get these uh, mounted back into position and get ourselves into an area where we're ready to um, uh, start to get our cable piece back together and all bolted up. And like I said, I'll bring you back and I'll show you these two mount points here on the passenger side because you can see that passenger cable is significantly longer uh, just because it has hook up to the passenger wheel route route around over the rear differential and snake its way over to the driver's side where it can fit into that bracket that we were looking at earlier but with that being said I'll, I'll let you go and i'll start working on getting these cables in i'll bring it back thank you much oh and you can see the supervisor is on his way to uh, uh examine the quality of our work here so hopefully we'll, we'll pass and we won't get written up with any kind of safety inspection but I'll let you go and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. Hey, and welcome back. So as promised, I just want to show these to you. Just in the process of getting the cable routed here. Let me get you some light because we're losing daylight fast out here right now. Okay, is that in the camera view? It looks like it, yes. So you can see the one bracket here that's mounted right, right by these... Um, well, you see the shock there, and uh, I'm drawing a blank as to what these two arms are. Oh, geez. Okay, well, anyway, you see our two suspension links here. You see the cable goes through the center of it. You can see that one bracket bolts right there. Uh, you can see the other bracket, hopefully, right there at the top of the, of the differential, the second attachment point. And the rest is just routing the cable appropriate three through. There's a holder right here on the driver's side. That's probably too close for you, but hopefully you can see that. Oh, let me get the viewfinder back up here and see what you're seeing, hopefully. There we go. So you can see it's just a matter of getting the cable routed from the passenger side here through its various, various hold down points up to the point where it's going to clip into that other holder and finally uh, join the kind of the two cables together when it goes into the one master cable that runs up to your e-brake pedal so what i'm going to do here is uh go ahead and get this passenger side attached it's just a matter of getting it uh, run through that holder getting it to clip back into here and then getting that cable fed uh, back in to this yeah, hopefully you can see that there into this e-brake holder here again there's just a little hole at the end of it that cable just goes up and down and with the cable not being attached uh, to that adjustment bracket yet on the driver's side you can just pull a little bit of slack in the cable towards you kind of bend the cable as you need to get it into that fitting so I'm going to work on that and then uh, uh, do what we need to do the driver's side and I'll, I'll bring it back one moment and welcome back so you can see that we got our driver's side cable attached again on these cables it's easier just to kind of feed in a little bit of slack bend the cable up slightly to get the hook into the actuator and then you can pull the excess slack back out of the cable using the opposite end and then get your spring in place and then get your finally just push this in place and let those clips seat so we've got that piece in you can see we've got that piece in where the driver's side bolts another bracket now i'm just working on putting um this piece back in you saw me take out earlier not apologize it's like i said we're 
We're losing daylight out here and it's starting to drop in temp. Oh, let's see here. So, also, uh, you can see the passenger cable came with uh, this piece, which links up to our um, our cable here. Um, the so what I had to do was, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, oh, hold on! I just dropped it. I know this video sucks. I I get it. The camera works bad because trying to crawl underneath and show all this. Is just uh, again raise one raise this one tab up here on this side, and get it to slide off the cable again that goes to the inside of the cab, because uh, again our our replacement cable came with one already. So what we have to do is get this lovely contraption back in place, which again ties our two brake cables, the rear or e brake cables for a rear driver and passenger together into one when it gets united uh, into our cable. So uh, again, it, all it's doing is allowing you to push one pedal on the inside of the truck and it, it makes sure that it pulls on both cables. So let me get to, let me get to work on this for a little bit and then I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. But again, it, it, the installation is straightforward. You can see that there. That is where the passenger cable is gonna come in and clip into. If you remember from when we disassembled it, this piece on the other side, that's where the driver's side cable comes into. So I'm gonna get to work on this real quick and real quick and I'll bring it back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So you can see, I did have to actually back this adjustment nut out quite a bit because with these new cables on here, the slack that was in there before that allowed us to just kind of pull in the cable and, and release this driver side coupling here uh, wasn't going to happen. <laughs> no matter how far, no matter how hard you pulled on that cable, even trying to pull it manually, you just couldn't get the distance to get that in there. So these cables are much, uh, much tighter and more secured than definitely the older ones. So again, just had to back that out quite a bit to get the length to get the driver uh, coupling on its cable. So what we ended up doing first was getting the passenger clip to go through this bracket and then getting the, the cable that goes up to the cab on the emergency brake cable into this coupling, get it to lock in, then loosen up this bolt to get that cable to lock in. Now all we have to do now is put this back to its original position which you can see by the threads was right about that far down so we need that to now be about there and then we'll try it again now it's going to be a bit tricky we can use a deep well to hold that bolt for a little while until it just gets too far in we're not going to be able to do that and then we're going to have to get creative and figure out a way to block this bolt from spinning while we can turn this piece down here to drive that bolt in and i'm sure there's probably a specialty tool to do that with which i don't have but you know, we'll make do with what we got but i'm going to go ahead and start cranking on this to get this adjustment down to where it was at and then i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so i'm getting pretty low on battery but you can see i've just been adjusting this screw to get it kind of about where it was at originally we're pretty close and you can see we got a nice taut cable now even with the emergency brake off so we should end up with a nice firmer uh, brake pedal that should start to I'm sorry e-brake pedal before it starts to uh, it should grab sooner before it hits all the way to the floor I'm gonna give this a couple more turns and that should get it exactly where it was when we took it loose and then I'll bring it back pretty much and welcome back so i just want to show you this here so uh and i'll do a roll test on this later and by that i mean tomorrow when we get some better light um i'll come in here put the truck in neutral verify that it'll roll with the e-brake off and then verify we come to a stop with it on because i just want to make sure that it'll still roll freely in neutral just so that we don't have it adjusted so far out it's inadvertently causing the e-brake to come on when it doesn't need to be but if you remember before I was able to push this down by hand with no effort. Okay, watch this now. Right there. That's as far down. 
as that pedal will go. And that's probably about half the travel. Maybe about a quarter to half the travel. Yeah, that's about probably about a quarter to half the travel that it had before. So we may be able to even uh, back off of that adjustment screw a little bit and give it another shot. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a couple of turns out of that adjustment screw and we come back. I'm going to, I'm going to give it another shot. One moment. And welcome back. So this is still subject to the roll test, but I took about four or five turns out of that adjustment screw. In other words, I uh, backed it off four or five turns. And now, right there is where I can't by, by hand push it anymore. And you can see we're about halfway down now on our travel, which is at least what I'm looking for. Uh, because that way, you know, if you've got shorter legs or whatever the case may be, you know, you just got to make it that far, at least until you feel it grab. And right here is where it starts to grab. And that's where you, it won't pull physically any more forward because you've got pretty much, you know, max pressure at this point with those e-brake shoes hitting the insides of those drums. So I'm much happier with that. It's got a lot more tension on that pedal than it did before. And you saw last time before we replaced that broken cable, you know, even though it would grab, it would, you just, you can literally by hand push it all the way to the floor. And now it takes some effort to at least get it to go halfway. So now we got a nice firm uh, pedal to deal with, which is much better. So with that being said, I will let you go. I'll go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, I will ask, just as I always do at the end of every video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, please consider to do so. I think we hit about 1,080 users or 1,080 subscribers at this point in the game. We're just really on that cusp of having the watch hours we need to monetize the channel, which again, once we can do that, albeit not a lot of money right away, but at least it'll be some funds that we can put towards doing more projects such as this. But with that being said, I will let you go. And like I said, one more thing to do, and I will do it off camera. I will do it tomorrow when we have better light. Is like I said, I'll do the rolling test. And by that, I mean, I'll uh, have my uh, foot on the brake, obviously, but we'll unchock the truck. We'll put it in neutral. We'll verify with the e-brake off that we can roll forward and backwards with no resistance, basically just making sure that this isn't adjusted so tight that, or adjusted too far, where it's intermittently causing the e-brakes to come on. Uh, as long as we can roll free, we'll put the e-brake on, verify that we come to a nice solid stop and the truck won't roll with it engaged. And as long as that looks good, then we're, we're pretty much done here. So to wrap it up, the majority of the problem looks like it was caused by those two broken mount points on the driver's side and I, i'm sorry it's going to go dark on you because i'm trying to collect tools here and we lost pretty much all our light so it looks like it was caused by the two broken mounts on the driver's side e-brake cable uh, and again let's just like i said before it's kind of like dealing with a cable on a bicycle uh, that that cable is mounted in certain points and those mounts are meant to hold the cable stationary so that way when you actuate the cable the cable on the inside of the sheathing moves and not the entire cable itself so it looks like that's what was going on here with those mounts being broke all of that slack on that pedal was being taken up by basically that outside cable moving finally butting into where it needed to butt into to get it to stop moving and then finally it would pull the inside of the cable to actuate the lever but either way uh, you saw the part numbers we went ahead and replaced the passenger side while we're at it so we got nice new e-brake cables on both sides and with that i will call it a video and i will bring you back for the next one thank you so much Bye.